In this video I'm going to be showing you how to make the highest damage melee weapon in Tears of the Kingdom. This weapon is especially useful for killing Lynels, and with it you can one cycle any Lynel. So let's get into it. The first thing that we're going to need for this is the Radiant Armor set from Kakariko Village. It's inside of this building. The first time that you come up to it, it will cost 5,000 rupees apiece. You can do a side quest with the shopkeeper by asking her about her situation at home in order to make the armor set cheaper. If you buy the armor set before doing the side quest, then you can also do the side quest later and get your rupees back. At least that's what she said when I bought it for 5,000 apiece. After that you need to have two great fairies unlocked and go to one of the great fairies to upgrade your bone armor set to where all the pieces are level 2. This will give you the bone proficiency set bonus, which does 1.8 times damage with any bone weapons. I believe to upgrade all the pieces you need 75 luminous stones, 9 bokoblin guts, and 9 moblin guts. Next we're going to need a Mulduga jaw, so I'm going to go to the Soryo Tanog shrine and go to the north of Gerudo town. You don't need to clear the sandstorm like some people say to do this, you can see their outline going around in the sand. This isn't the only location, but I think this one's the easiest to get to. If you throw something on the ground while they're digging, they'll come up to get it. So you can throw a bomb or a time bomb, and they'll jump up and explode while they eat it. This gives a good opening for some free damage. They do hit pretty hard and have a strong getup attack, so be aware of that. And once this thing dies, it'll drop a Mulduga Jaw, which is the strongest bone fuse weapon that counts for bone proficiency. A Gibdo Bone is slightly stronger, but it breaks in one hit even on a Lionel's back. Next we're going to head over to Lookout Landing to get the Royal Guard's Claymore. This Royal Guard's Claymore is not going to be the weapon that we use, but getting it is a prerequisite for our final weapon. So once you get through the front gate, you're just going to take this left stairwell over here. Run up to the second story and then take a right and behind this rubble you're going to find the Royal Guards Claymore. Once we have this we're just going to beat it up and break it because we don't like this stupid thing. Just keep doing ground slams, throw it, Whatever you want to do to beat it up. Now that it's broken, and the reason we did this is because we want to get the pristine version. In order to get the pristine version, you have to destroy the worn version at least once, and then you have to wait a blood moon and go into the depths to find it. But since I didn't want to wait for the blood moon, I did glitch to overload the game's memory cache and screw with the game clock in order to force a blood moon to happen. You can do this by having a multi-shot bow and slowing down time, then shooting precious gemstones at indestructible rocks and a select few other objects. This will cause the game to lag a lot, and once you hit the ground, the blood moon will be forced to happen. You can also save before you do this, and then load after you trigger the blood moon, and it will still trigger the blood moon if you don't want to waste gems or arrows or durability on your bow. Now that we've done the prerequisites to get a pristine Royal Guards Claymore, we're going to go to the Quorum Light Route. You can get here by going near the Sahasra Slope Sky View Tower, and then dropping through this chasm. Then you can just head to your west, and you'll find the Quorum Light Route. Now that we're at the Quorum Light Route, we're going to do something to ensure that we get the Royal Guards Claymore pristine version. Going to make a hard save at the Quorum Light Route. And the reason for this is when you find a pristine weapon held up by one of the soldiers down here, the weapon that they're holding is actually generated when they render. So you can save outside of render distance and then just keep reloading your save and running up to them. And it will re-roll whatever they're holding. Also, the Quorum Lightroot one in particular is able to spawn Royal Guards equipment and two-handed weapons. The one that we're going for is over to the west of the light route. Since I saw he wasn't holding what we wanted, I'm just going to reload the save. 
You can also make a save closer to the soldier as long as he's not in render range when you save. You can force a re-rolled weapon. And here he is holding what we want in the Royal Guards Claymore. Unfortunately, I didn't get an upgrade roll on this. If you do get an upgrade roll, you can save load in front of the soldier before you pick it up. And you'll be able to re-roll your upgrade. Instead, we're going to upgrade to try to get plus 10 attack from Octorox. I could have done a fuse upgrade swap in order to get the plus 10 on this, but I figured I would do it this way to make it a little easier to follow, since this video already has a pretty good amount of steps. And here it is, we finally got our Royal Guards Claymore attack plus 10 on this roll. Now for the fun part, we're going to finally start putting everything together. So we're starting with a Royal Guards Claymore that has attack plus 10, that's going to be 49 attack plus a Mulduga Jaw, that gives another 32 attack, times our Bone Proficiency Set Bonus, that's going to be a 1.8 times multiplier. And at the moment I'm working on the next part, what needs to be done is the Royal Guard's Claymore needs to be damaged, because its specialty is that it gains damage when it has really low durability, so I'm doing jump attacks until it says that it's badly damaged. The claymore being badly damaged has given it a 2 times multiplier, but if we do 2 more jump attacks, then now it has a hidden extra 2 times multiplier because it's reached the second threshold of its special ability. This puts our current total at 583.2, but because this game doesn't do decimals, we're just going to call it 583. Now we're going to increase our damage even more by making a dish out of 5 mighty bananas. And once we eat this dish, we have another 1.5 times attack, bringing our total to 874. Let's see exactly how strong this is on this Lionel. So we're going to hop on him, and it's only going to take 4 attacks to kill this Lionel. This is really strong against Lionels, and will really help you get through the Lionel Coliseum if you're struggling with that. But it definitely has other applications as well. If you throw it or do the breaking strike on an enemy, it will do 2 times damage, meaning that you'll do 1749 damage in one hit. So this can be a great weapon to help you out of a pinch if you're fighting a really hard boss or struggling on something. Since you can get a lot of burst damage all at once, it's great as a last resort, but also if you're using it like this, you can actually use the Gibdo Bone in this case. This would push your damage up to 1922. And the final thing that I want to mention is enemies also take 3 times damage when they're frozen. That means on any enemy that you can freeze, you can hit them for 5767 damage. If you use all the tricks that I used in this video, then it's also pretty easy to farm this. Anyways, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to like and subscribe.